Hello. So a lot of you know that I have a sister who lives in Italy, and I, a lot of you have been asking me how she's doing, so I thought it would be a good idea to FaceTime her. And Lori, you are joining us from Assisi, which is a couple of hours to the north of Rome, really in the center of the country. First question, how are you doing? I'm good, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm calm. I don't have anything to complain about. So what is daily life like there for you? The first shock was Monday evening because um, I, I wanted to be here for Lent. For those of you that don't know, you know, Assisi is the birthplace of Francis, of St. Francis of Assisi in St. Clair. It's a very faithful, religious little town. It's a, it's a walled city. Um, it's a medieval city, so it, it looks a bit like stepping back in time when you're here. Monday afternoon I went to 6 p.m. mass and I found a sign at the entrance of the church it was a letter from the bishop explaining that all masses all public gatherings any liturgical events of any kind were being suspended until April 3rd so that was the first shock because Assisi is the heartbeat of Assisi is the faith life Monday evening our time about nine o'clock I think they had announced that the whole of Italy was now on lockdown. So this was the second shock that we were basically on lockdown. Well, what does that mean? It means that we are asked or we are, we're actually mandated um, to be in our homes. Uh, and the only time that we're able to leave our home is for basic necessities. So grocery stores are still open. Pharmacies are still open. Assisi is a small town, so no one really, if you do take a walk, there's plenty of space. There's no one on the streets at all, barely anyone. They really, they really don't want to have people out. They want them at home. What do you do day in and day out then? Although I have a very small place, I, I, I basically have a one room studio. Um, but because I have this terrace, you know, the, the view um, is amazing. And so I'm able to be out on my terrace and get fresh air most of the day. So I, I, I consider myself really fortunate to have that. I'm used to being on my own. I, I wrote it, a dissertation a few years back. And so this to me is reminiscent of that period. My son used to call me, my son, your, your nephew, used to call me the hermit. Because really, when I was writing my dissertation, other than walking a dog, which I had at the time, and going to mass and, you know, the grocery store occasionally, that was the only time I left the house. So, so I'm used to solitude and I'm used to long periods of time. I've actually took my dissertation out again and started reading it again after several years. It's very interesting because I wrote on the topic of hope uh, based on the... Um, Paschal sermons of St. Augustine of Hippo. It's fun to reread it, but it's also really appropriate right now to read about hope. I don't have loved ones in the hospital here that are dying. I mean, this is, you know, the, the I think it's 25% of the Italian population is elderly. And the average age of people who have died from this are is 81 to 89. So I feel that pain. Um, and Italians are very close to their families. And the mayor wrote a letter, which was really beautiful, about how you know we have to take care of the most vulnerable of our society and the elderly. And so we need to make this sacrifice um, that's going to be inconvenient, but a small sacrifice to, to help these people out. So being here and just the way people, you know, here are behaving, you know, no one's stockpiling, um, you know, the stores are full, people are relatively tranquil. Um, they're very worried about what's going to happen, but they're, they're doing it with courage and they're doing it with a sense of humor. Maybe you've seen some of these flash mobs from balconies because people can't actually be together, but they can go out on their balconies and they can sing. and. So they're finding ways to cope. Times like this where I realize, you know, why, what I love about Italy. And it's, it's the heart of the Italian people, really, and their dedication to their families and, um, and to their faith. Since Italy is now the epicenter for the coronavirus, are you personally concerned about your own health? N no. So I am not, I'm really not at all concerned about my health. Um, it's more the concern that... I could, I could pass it to someone. 
you know, and I have friends in that, I have quite a few friends in that at-risk category. And so really staying in is, that alleviates that, that um, stress for me because I'm not out, so I can't be exposing anyone unwittingly or unknowingly. Mm-hmm. So um, I think f- for that reason as well, you know, to, to, to be able to be inside takes a lot of that, that stress away. And they and they've actually asked us not to call it isolation, oh, okay. which is interesting, but social distancing because um, with social distancing it still denotes something that's social. You know, they're 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 trying to 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 emphasize being in solidarity with each other and and doing doing what we can do to keep connected. Is there anything else that you want our family and friends back here in the States to know how you're doing? It's, it's distressing for me to hear sort of this wave of panic that seems to be hitting the U.S. Um, and people stockpiling. I just, I don't think it's a time to close in and just think about ourselves, you know? I think, it, I would say we need to be prudent and not panic. Look at this time time as a time to maybe reevaluate relationships um, and to be together if you know if you're if you're going to stay um, if you're going to you know follow these directives to stay in the house you know to just to take some time to to do things that you wouldn't normally have time to do it's you know the the blessing of this um, in, in the midst of the, all the suffering is is that it's giving people an opportunity to slow down, um, think about what's important, reach out to each other. Maybe you can't physically touch someone. We're not even supposed to shake hands now, and you know, no physical c- contact. But you can have contact in other ways. So for every handshake you can't give, give something else. Give a smile. You know, give eye contact. It's like this, this, the simple things. Lori, thank you very much. Uh, I can speak for all of us in the family when I say uh, we are glad and grateful that you are doing well. And I love your perspective. So thank you very much. You're very welcome.